Hello and welcome back to our study of the Dhammapada. Today we continue on with verse 163, which reads as follows Sukarani asaduni atano ahitani cha yang ve hitancha sadhuncha tang ve paramadukaram which means the bad that which is not good is easily done sukarani atano ahitani cha what is and what is bad for oneself what is of no use to oneself What is beneficial and good, that is the hardest to do. This verse was taught in regards to Devadatta again. So last week we learned about Devadatta here, specifically talking about the, the schism, where, where Devadatta uh, proceeded to sep to to uh, divide the monks. He got some new monks under his uh, tutelage, and he misled them into thinking that the Buddha was soft, that the Buddha was not going to push them, challenge them, and was not practicing properly. So he made a determination to. Uh, conduct the affairs of the Sangha apart from the rest of the monks. And so he went and told Ananda this. Devadatta found Ananda in the, in the city and said, today I'm going to conduct our business. You know, basically we're talking about monastic affairs and it, there's, a, there's a structure to it. Yeah, you do them together. Everybody in the area comes together every two weeks and they... Uh, do the chanting of the rules and so on. And uh, Devadatta said, "No, I'm, I'm separating. I'm going to divide the sangha, to split the sangha." And Ananda went and told the Buddha, and the Buddha, the Buddha taught two verses. There's not much of a story here. This is what happened. He, he, he first taught a verse from the Udana. And it's going to be interesting to relate these two verses. So the first, the verse from the Udana is very similar to the one that we read, except it's more specific. If you were, if you were a little bit unsure about the Dhammapada verse, listen to the Udana. The Udana says, "By the good, uh, that which is good, is easy to do. Easy to do." Sukarang sadhu na sadhu. By the sadhu, sadhu means one who is good. Sadhu means that which is good. Sukarang is easy to do. Sadhu papi na dukarang. By the evil, the good is hard to do. Mm, so it's a little different actually. Papang papi na sukarang. By the evil, evil is easily done. Papa Mariehi Dukkarang. By the noble ones, evil is difficult to do. And then he taught this verse, the, the Dhammapada verse. So whether it happened exactly like this, I'm not sure. But we do have these two verses in the uh, Tipitaka one from the Udana, one from the Dhammapada. So we'll. we'll Discuss them. I think there's an interesting point to be made in comparison. But the first, I first just wanted to talk a little bit about schisms and communal harmony in general. And I think there's a really interesting point in the fact that the Buddha never kicked Devadatta out of the Sangha. There's, a, there's an interesting point to the fact that the Buddha allowed Devadatta to ordain, knowing full well that Devadatta was corrupt, or that we let uh, anyone ordain without first testing them. You know, nowadays nowadays we're a little less confident than the Buddha in our ability to help people, I think is the point. And so we put up lots of barriers to ordination. 
We've been through this uh, experience with monks who behave very badly and because we're not the Buddha, we're not confident in our ability to deal with that. Now, I've been to monasteries where um, you know, I, I thought the head monk was a great monk. Um, and then I, But I wondered why so many bad monks were allowed to stay, to come and to stay. My teacher said to us once, he said, uh, don't bring people. Tell, I think he was talking about uh, Germany, actually, because uh, they were having a hard time with, um, with the German, uh, German society. You know, the monks going on alms round was, was seen as a begging, which is not allowed. So they had to be careful, and there was some. Anyway, there was some concern, and he said, "Tell them, tell them we'll take all their bad people. Bring all their bad people to us, and, and we'll do a service to society." And he said, "We take all the worst people and turn them into good people. I mean, that may be wishful thinking that they can become good people, but we can certainly make them better people." And so it, it's, it's, I think it's quite instructive, the fact that Devadatta became a monk, the fact that the Buddha tolerated him and refused to, refused to be the one to create further karma, you know, refused to be the one to, uh, to instigate violence, right? Allowing Devadatta to torture himself until he finally realized that that's all he was doing. And in the end, he couldn't hurt the Buddha or the Buddha's religion. As some people have said, Devadatta was, made a great service to the Buddha's religion to show how great and compassionate and moderate and tolerant the Buddha was. That even in the face of great evil, he was unmoved, uh, and he was patient, and still thinking only of the, the greater good, you know, and the greater good for Devadatta. He once said, I think, I'm not sure if it's, I can't remember where it is exactly or if it actually is, but I've heard people talk about this, where um, he said he loved, he loved Devadatta just as he loved his own son. Pretty sure it's in the Tipitaka or the commentaries, but it's there somewhere. I mean, it's a good point, is what would it say if what does it say when we don't like someone? You know, as Buddhists, I mean, you know, our Buddhist practice, and yet we, then we, we commit to all these values, and yet we, we hate evil people. You know, I'm thinking very much about the situation in the world now. There's a lot of modern, uh, current affairs that that relate to this. You know between different countries, the, the shadow of war, the specter of war, and uh, within countries, the civil war or civil disobedience. And uh, not to take sides or to criticize or to attack or, or even to comment really on, on current affairs, but to point out this Dhamma of tolerance and forgiveness and thinking about the good of all, all beings, thinking only for good, you know. We, we often strive for good, and yet when someone who is clearly steeped in evil comes along, we are willing to completely discard them as trash. We're, 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 we're willing to categorize them as evil and have no interest in their well-being, right? Thinking, let's just get rid of them, kick them out. Anyway, I think that's an important lesson here. It's not really the main lesson, obviously, but, but it's part of it, you know? It's hard for, hard for a, a noble one to kick someone out because it's hard for them to do something evil. It's hard for them to hurt others. So the Adana says, um, The Adana says something quite reasonable, and I like the Dhammapada, I think Dhammapada verse is actually more special, but, or special in a different way, because the Udana says something quite simple, 
If you're a good person, it's hard for you to do evil. If you're an evil person, it's hard for you to do good. Good people do good easily, and evil people do evil easily. Again, to be clear, there's no such thing as an evil person or a good person. Evil is a mind state, good is a mind state, and so we should never ask the question, am I evil or am I good? And we should be clear about the good and the evil that we have inside, and that's the truth. And it's not even that we have inside, it's that it has the potential for arising because of our bad habits, because of our ignorance, and so on. So if we're very good people, that sort of bad thing, bad stuff doesn't arise as much. If we're very uh, bad people, the good stuff doesn't arise as much. And so the potential to do good or evil depends very much on your state, depends very much on your habits and your, your uh, development of mind, your clarity of mind. But the Dhammapada says something a little bolder. It says, for anyone, basically in general, that which is good and, uh, and to your benefit is hard to do. It is easy to do that which is not to your benefit. And I don't want to make a huge deal of the difference, but I think it's interesting to, to talk about um, the difference between good and what is good for you. Because doing good is just a general thing that often has karmic consequences, good karmic consequences. But it's not a direct um, practice leading to the realization of freedom from suffering. So it doesn't purify your mind um, in any categorical or profound way. It just uh, makes you happy. So if you're nice to people, that's a good thing. And it is supportive of your practice, certainly. But there's a difference between good and what actually heals the mind, what actually is good for you. And so here I think it is fair to say that for all of us, what is good for us is difficult to do. Uh, because what is good for us is change, is a change of our bad habits. Right? So we're not talking actually about the good habits, we're talking about the stuff that we're trying to heal, the stuff that we're trying to cure. And those people who have the most, um, unfortunately those people who have the most need of change, those who have the most um, because an enlightened being has, has nothing that is to their benefit. A person, an Arya, as the Buddha mentions here, someone who is enlightened, there's nothing that's to their benefit. Why? Because they've already done what needs to be done. There's nothing that can make them a better person, not fundamentally. Sure, they can study more and become why, uh, smarter and more aware of the world, but they can't become purer. And so, uh, it, whereas it's easy for such people to do good, they have no need of it. And so to the extent that we have things that need to be done, to that extent it's difficult. A person who is full of bad habits, very strong bad habits, who, who needs that which is good for them, needs to do that which is good for them the most, has the hardest time doing it. And so here we're, we're not just talking about good deeds. We're talking about studying our habits and, and learning about them. And you know, the practice of meditation by which we train the mind to be in the present moment and to be objective about things. And uh, by doing so, to focus on reality and to see it as it is and to change our perception of things, to change the way we look at our, our experiences so that instead of reacting to them, um, we see them clearly. We're always looking for a goal, We're trying to achieve something, even in meditation, wondering what we're going to get out of it and concerned about what we're going to get out of it. And it's very hard to change that habit. Enlightenment is not natural to anyone. It's not the way we 
Uh, it's not going back to anything natural. What's natural really is all the bad habits that we have. It's our nature. And we are made up of conflict and attachment, aversion, delusion. We're in the dark. We didn't start in the light. Right? Light is something that has to has to come into being. Wisdom is the same. You know, becoming enlightened, of course, is the hardest hardest thing one can ever do. The most difficult. It's in it's in direct opposition to everything that got us where we are now. Right? To becoming human. To being. Uh, caught up in samsara and ambition and uh, goals and wants and needs just being alive with all our desires and, and wishes and wants and so on so it's a simple teaching but uh, I think it bears noting how Yes, indeed. Um, good people have an easier time doing good. But no matter whether you're good or evil, the hardest thing is to better yourself. Even for a good person. In fact, it's just as hard. Just as hard for a sotapanna, a sakatagami, an anagami to better themselves. Because it's always going to be the things that we're, we're, we're uh, least mindful of, right? That's why... Again and again we have to remind the meditators, just because your practice is good, is, is pleasant, doesn't mean it's good. And uh, it's what you're least mindful of that you have to pay most attention to. Because these are the bad habits, these are the, the causes of... If we saw things clearly, if, if, if and when, and in those aspects of our life that we do see clearly, uh, there'll be no problem, there'll be no suffering. There's no bettering yourself there. Bettering yourself comes from changing the bad habits, which are the ones where you're least mindful. So it's difficult to do. Different from saying that good people do good things easier. Yes, they do. That's what's good about them. But what's bad about them? That's what we're interested in. So until you become an arahant or a Buddha, it will always be difficult to better yourself. At the point when you become enlightened, it will be impossible to better yourself. So it goes from difficult to impossible. It never gets easy. It will be impossible because you've already done the work. So that's the Dhammapada for tonight. Thank you all for tuning in.